In this video, I'm going to show you the power of split testing and how it will increase your Shopify conversion rate, ad performance, and so much more. And by the end of this video, you'll have 15 split tests that you can use today to make more sales on your Shopify store. Now, when things are going right with your e-commerce or dropshipping brand, it's so easy to get complacent because you've done all the hard work of making things work. So we get into this frame of mind where because it's not broken, we don't want to change or fix anything. But the reality is with e-commerce, you have to constantly be evolving because your first first price point, your first offer, your first copywriting, your first description, your images on your website, every single thing that you have right now can be improved upon through strategic split tests. Now, I'm not saying you should just change everything all at once, but when you do strategic split tests, which is maybe changing one variable at a time so that you have that independent variable where you can attribute all of your conversion rate to that one change. So maybe you try decreasing your price or changing your images to UGC clips or rephrasing your headline. There's so many different things that you can split test to increase your conversion rate and you can't make the mistake of being complacent and thinking, oh, I'm at a 4.5% conversion rate. I have 13% ads cards. That's really good and it is really good but it can always be approved upon that four percent can get to six and that six percent can get to eight and you always have to be aiming for higher otherwise you're just going to constantly be losing more money because when you advertise and you advertise for a long period of time naturally your cpas are going to go up so you have to be looking for ways to squeeze out more profit now your first split test usually is going to be your offer because the offer is the best split test to do because that makes the biggest difference so usually you want to split test different price points which is maybe raising your price by two to four dollars or lowering it by two to four dollars or changing the entire structure of the offer so if your offer is 40 percent off you might want to try something like 50 percent off or do buy one get one free or buy one get one 50 percent off you just want to try to change the offer first because your first initial offer that you put out there is never gonna be the best one. And so many people will just throw out a random number and they'll think, well, I think this product is worth this much. So, hey, if it's working, I'm just gonna stick it there. But you can never be complacent. You should always be split testing $2, $4. And maybe the first price you did actually is the best, but you'll never know until you do split tests of raising your price, of changing the offer structure. Maybe buy one, get one free. will actually have a better conversion rate and you'll make more money because the AOV will typically go up. You never really know until you do split tests. And at my agency, Blowish and Digital, I'm literally Mr. Split Test. All my media buyers are annoyed with how much I say you need a split test because I know at the end of the day, when you are scaling brands, you have to constantly be looking for new things to tweak around so maybe that's the color of your buy now button maybe that is your description being too wordy and you want to get rid of a few sentences maybe that's adding some more reviews or having some more social proof in general you really never know and if you are interested in working with a team of experts that will constantly be looking for ways to scale your next or first dropshipping product to a thousand dollars a day you can actually book a call down below and have my team build websites for you find winning products create ads and do so much more to make the whole entire e-commerce process a dream for you. Now, when you are doing split tests on your website, your ads, or whatever it is, how do you actually measure the performance to know if that change was statistically significant, that it actually did lead to a positive or negative impact? Well, for me, I use a statistical significant calculator like the one from SurveyMonkey. And who said AP calculus and things you learn from school wouldn't apply to the real world? Because it actually does. When you are doing split tests and you're changing one variable, you should be doing it for at least a week or two weeks to at least get about a thousand sessions on your website that are before the change and a thousand after the change so you can really measure hey did this change make a significant impact or not now as you can see with this calculator you can just go into here and let's say we did a split test where we have page a which is our original product page so we can say it's this one right here and then we decide to do a split test where we lower our price for a few days to 32.99 or at least until we get to a thousand visitors now for me personally i like to do at least a week for every single split test because if you do a split test let's say on a friday well that day is naturally going to have better conversion rates so it can lead to incorrect data or if you do a split test on a monday where it's typically not the best sales day yeah you might have incorrect data and it's just all over the place and it's a little bit fluky so if you do a whole week and it gets Monday, Tuesdays, and the Fridays and Saturdays, that's usually gonna be the most accurate split test. So let's say we got a thousand visitors on both websites. So at 35.99 from a thousand visitors, we got 20 conversions. Then from a thousand on page B, let's say we got 32. Now we would wanna do a two-sided hypothesis and you can see right here, it counts for the possibility that your variant can have a negative impact, blah, 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 which yes, it can have a negative impact. Now when it comes to confidence level, Typically, most people do around 90%. And if we calculate, 
let's see if this leads to a significant result. And as you can see right here, it says significant result. And that's how you know that your split test actually did lead to a positive or negative impact. And in this case, it was a positive impact. Lowering the price led to more conversions, which is statistically significant. But let's say if we did this and it only got 22 conversions, result not significant. This means that the change you made, which is lowering the price, it didn't really lead to an increase or decrease that much, or at least it wasn't statistically significant enough to attribute that change as the reason why your conversion rate went up or down. Let's get into some split tests that you can use today to make more money on your Shopify store. Now we already talked about how the number one change you can always make as a split test is changing up your offer structure. So if you're doing 40% off or in typical vanilla offer of 50% off, you can definitely add some spice and try to do a BOGO offer. And this really depends on your margin per product. So for this product right here, it cost me about $8. And if I did a BOGO offer, that means it would be around an extra $5 because the product cost is five, shipping cost was about three. But if I buy two, then the shipping cost remains the same. So it cost me 13, so I still get about a $22 margin. And that's a pretty enticing offer, getting two of the same thing for the same price. Now, if you're wondering how to do a BOGO offer on Shopify, it's very, very simple. You can implement this today. All you have to do, click create discount, then go on to buy X, get Y. Super simple, you choose the product that you're selling. So let's say this silicon product right here. And then we say, once the person adds this to the cart, and they're about to check out, well, they get another product for free and it's the exact same one. So we can go right here, super duper simple, click add. And then automatically when they get to the checkout page, if they have added an extra cart item, they'll have it for free. But just a quick note, if you are doing a BOGO offer or buy one, get two free, you should spell it out as to how the customer can actually redeem that offer. Because you have to keep in mind, as marketers, as e-commerce business owners, yes, doing this sounds so simple. Literally just add three to your cart and then boom, two of them are free. But you should be spelling it out because other people that are gonna be buying from you aren't the brightest people. It's typically impulse buyers, people that will just willy nilly add stuff to their cart all the time. So I personally like to model what this website is doing when I, I'm doing a buy one, get one offer, where I would literally say, add two plus TikTok leggings or whatever the product is into your cart. Discount is automatically applied to checkout, double check your order. And then having literal images where you take a screenshot of what that would look like at checkout and putting that in the description, it just makes it so easy. You have to spell it out because the less friction, the less confusion people have as to how to do your offer, the better. Now, when it comes to trying to increase your conversion rate on your product page, some of the split tests you can do that are more design based can be stuff like changing your buy now color. And I know this seems so nerdy, like oh, if you change it from black to pink, you might get a extra 10% conversion rate or 0 0.04. I can guarantee a lot of the times, even though it seems like a small change and you can change stuff as small as the font on your website and you can notice a 10%, a 20% increase in conversion rate just because you are using a font that people that you're marketing to just didn't like. And I know it seems small, but really sometimes the smallest changes lead to the biggest results. And it could be changing your buy now button from pink to green or from green to black, or even changing your logo to a newly designed logo that you think might look better. But when you actually make that change, their conversion rate drops. So maybe the old logo, even though it doesn't look great, actually leads to a better conversion rate. So you should be focusing on things that you can always split test. And I would recommend again, only changing one thing at a time, evaluating it over a course of at least a week, and then putting it into a statistical significant calculator, all your data to see if it's actually statistically significant. Now, if you want to increase the conversion rate on your e-commerce store, the most important section of any product page is above the full. Now, if you don't know what that means, it basically is just the information that is available to you as soon as you click the product page link, of your website. So as soon as someone loads, what do they see? And in general, the best practices is to make sure they have images of the product, the product title, the price. And if you can fit in the add to cart above the fold as well and give them all the information right there, because 100% of the people will have access to all that information. But when they scroll down, and I know this seems very small, but getting to this first headline, and I know literally super easy to do, typically 80, 75% of your customers around there will actually make it to that first headline. So you want to try to put in as much information as possible above the fold that everyone has access to, because that will naturally increase your conversion rate and add to cart rate at least because everyone will have access to that button. So when you look at big brands like blenders, for instance, you can see right here, they have great images, product title, 
price and an add to cart button all available as soon as you load in this is absolutely perfect and i would recommend every single brand to model what they're doing getting all the important information above the fold and when you look at other brands like obvi they do a really good job of trying to put it as soon as possible that add to cart button but obviously because it's more of an informational product and needs more instructions and directions because it is a health product as well they try to also have a nice little subtitle but most big brands are always focusing on that above the fold section so if i was to critique my own website i would personally get rid of the search bar because i don't even have that many products i would say the only reason why you need a search bar is if you have at least 10 plus products the code I would say maybe we would consider split testing getting rid of it and then having it on to see what the conversion rate does so that would be a very good split test actually scrolling down images are a pretty good size i would think if we get rid of this section we can push everything up a little bit product title can be a little bigger price looks pretty good now when it comes to variants i split tested having variants below the add to cart button sometimes and that converts better with quantity two getting rid of that compared to having it I've actually noticed having a quantity bar typically converts less than when you don't have it. It's just sometimes a lot of empty real estate. And when you go into Hotjar or any sort of service where you can see what your customers are clicking, I would say maybe 1% of customers actually click the quantity button. Just they don't really do it that often. So the buy now button, again, super important. You could even try putting the buy now button right under the price. That is a very interesting split test you can try out just to see, is it possible that my conversion rate goes up when doing that? Now, one of the most hotly debated topics in e-commerce when it comes to product pages is should you have a countdown timer? Now, for me personally, I've actually been a very big proponent of countdown timers. I think they do lead to more urgency and getting people to make a decision today. But obviously, that's just a gut feeling for me. And I would say if you're really trying to figure out should you have a countdown timer or not, is through a split test. Have it on your website for a week and you should have a data before you have the countdown timer so that you know baseline. Okay. Before countdown timer, I'm at a 2% conversion rate. All right, let's add a countdown timer, see how it performs over the course of a week with at least a thousand sessions and see if our conversion rate went up statistically significantly enough for us to deem that change as the reason why our conversion rate either went up or went down because for any element of a product page, you can always argue that will help or hurt your product page, but you will really never know because every single website is different. Every single product is different. Everything reacts differently. So you should be split testing and just seeing, Hey, does this make the change? Because a lot of times your assumptions will be wrong. Now, one of the most underrated things that you can split test on your website is the actual images. A lot of people will just stick with doing white background photos and they'll just call it a day. But a lot of things that you can do to split test to see, okay, will this increase my conversion rate is having UGC or GIFs in your product images. I've seen a lot of great brands have GIFs of their product in action, have customer wearing it or a model having some UGC, a three second clip inside of their product images as the second or third photo that people can scroll onto. And it really gives you a great picture as to what will the product look on me? Will it actually serve the purpose that I think it will? And it's a great visual demonstration outside of just the the typical white background image. Now for me personally, I do like to have a white background image as the default image that people see. But if they do scroll around, I do like to have a GIF in there. I do like to have UGC. And that's something you can split test having all white background images versus having UGC. And there's some great brands that they know because they advertise on TikTok heavily, they'll have graphics like this one right here where it says TikTok made me buy it or as seen on TikTok to really show to your audience that oh crap, this is the exact product I've been seeing advertised everywhere. And it's just great social proof. Now, when you're running ads for any product that you plan to sell, you should always be running split tests when it comes to a variety of different things. Now, I would always say the biggest split test you should do is through your hook. You should always have a hook that captivates people's attention. And you never know what hook will be the one that works until you split test a variety of different clips. So for me, when I'm testing this eyelash serum right here, we can see this first clip is showing off the box. This clip right here on this ad is a person wearing the product, we go to the third ad and it's a close up of someone applying the eyelash serum. So again, when you are doing ads, the main thing that you can split test is usually going to be your hook, that opening clip, and then the text that you have on screen for that opening hook. So for me right here, we got forget extensions, 4X your natural lashes at home. We go to this one, get thicker, more resilient lashes that never break or fall out. You really, when you are advertising, just have to throw a bunch of ideas, concepts, clips at the wall and just see what sticks. Now, other things you can split test with your advertising is the length of your ads. With some products, you might have the assumption that, okay, because they're just very simple, I should only be doing shorter ads that are five seconds, nine seconds, 15 seconds. But it's always good to split test having those longer clips as well because you never know what's going to work 
until you split test. And I'm a very big believer in that, that you can really talk yourself out of a great idea by trying to apply too much sense to it because there really is no sense in e-commerce. You should always be split testing. So for me, this is an eyelash serum product. We have ads that are 30 seconds long. This one is also around the same length. Then we got 40 seconds. We got some that are going to be 45 seconds. We'll have some clips of ads that are only 15 seconds long because you never know what your audience is going to receive and be receptive to because sometimes they want more of an explanation with your product. They want more clips of UGC and influencers raving about your product, but you'll never know what's going to work until you test. Then a couple final things that you can split test is the music because sometimes the music that you will initially test with isn't the best so you should try a variety of different trendy songs as well you should try different faces maybe you have one ad where it's just one person continuously throughout the ad then you might have another ad which is a bit of a hodgepodge a bit of a mashup between all these different influencers into one and then you might have one where it's just more informing about the product and then you might have another where it's just demonstrating the product you should always have different frameworks and i've talked about this in so many ad videos having different frameworks that do different ways of selling your product because you never know what's going to sell the best and really with with any area of e-commerce, you can do split tests. It doesn't have to be your ads or your website. You can even do it with your email marketing. I know for my brand right here, My Slim Waste, when I was selling waste trainers, you can see right here, I had four different emails just for the first email of my abandoned cart sequence. We had different subject lines that we're split testing. So your cart is missing you with an emoji. It looks like you left something behind. And all of these had different ways of explaining themselves and had different graphics. So right here, we got forgot something you left in your cart. Take me back to my cart. We had the most popular items. I mean, geez, Louise. That looks very Kim Kardashian Photoshop-esque, if I say so myself. But yeah, you're looking at this. I mean, again, they look very similar, but they have slightly different copy or a slightly different subject line in some cases. But you should always be split testing because you never know what's going to work until you have these split tests. And with Clavio, they have built-in ways for you to split test and look at the analytics of what's getting more clicks, what's getting more people driven back to your website. So again, every single thing if you want to improve your game and make more sales should be split tested